afternoon, whatever it is. Uh, this is Carl F. Rose recording uh, from Bedford, Pennsylvania. This is going to be my generic intro from now on because of my situation. Um, I just have to sneak around and do videos now from now on because of the things. Anyway, we're going to get into the video right after this. everyone, this is Carl F. Rose recording live from Bedford, Pennsylvania on Saturday, November 10th, 2018. And I just wanted to get this short little video out, uh, a little bit on the uh, Red Wings, on the Pistons, on the Lions, and then on the Wolverines. And since today is Saturday, uh, well, we'll get into that. Anyway, um, the Pistons, it looks like it's going to be a lot more enjoyable to watch the Pistons and the Red Wings uh, instead of the Lions. Uh, I'll get into that. I'll get into the Lions in a minute. But let's start with the, uh, the uh, Red Wings. Uh, they beat uh, the Rangers last night in overtime. Um... Dylan Larkin is starting to take off, which is good. Uh, they started the season 0-7 and won something like that. But, uh, now they're they're like uh, six and eight, I believe. Um, anyway, uh, I've predicted. I I said that the Wings and the uh, Pistons both would just be a disaster. Well, what I didn't really realize. Um, as far as the Pistons go, that they had a number of their main people uh, injured uh, to start off the season. Well, they're coming back now. The, the, their, the, their key players are coming back from injuries, and they're getting back in the lineup. The very first game of the, the season I watched, um, they had their... their Starting uh, line one was all rookies. Uh, they hadn't done that since their losing season in the 1980s. So it was a disastrous game. Um, but then again, when your whole line is all rookies and they're starting out in their first NHL game, well, <laughs> uh, that's going to happen. I have to say, though, even though they did lose, um, uh, there is there is a future for the Red Wings. They're, they're, they're uh, youngsters. Um they're going to be, if they get more playing time, when they get called up when, as needed, uh, this is good. They're, they're working them in. But now they're, they're, they've won like four of six lately, so, so that's pretty good. Um, but I said they were going to be dead last. I mean, they are, they are uh, barely ahead of um, one other team, and I th think it's the Florida Panthers. Um, I'm not sure something like that anyway they're almost in dead last but uh, there's they're, they're picking it up so so this is encouraging um, now the Pistons they they dominated um, uh, Atlanta the other night and uh, <coughs> excuse me just ate some chips and uh, had some go in there um, anyway um, yeah, they dominated Atlanta, and I said a while back, a few videos back, that they would only win like maybe 20 games. Well, they're at six. They have six wins. They're like six and five right now, something like that. Um, uh, both the Red Wings and the, the Pistons, they're they're playing at a 50-50 pace uh, average. It's not going to get you anywhere, but um, it's still early in the season for both teams. Uh, we won't know really what direction the Red Wings or the Pistons are heading in until probably the end of January. Um, so if, if both either or both of these teams make some pretty good runs from here and there, and uh, and uh, they're positioning themselves into a spot, um, well, that'll be that's good. That's what we want. Um, I, as I said, uh, I thought the Pistons would only win like maybe a maximum of, of 20 games, but uh, that's definitely uh, wrong. Uh, I was off on that, and it looks like Casey, <coughs> excuse me again, um, 
Casey is a nice relief, let me just say. Um, I haven't really watched too much of it, so I can't really say anything about his coaching style, but um, from what I can see, what little I've seen, it's uh, it's a lot better than uh, Stan Van Gundy. Van Gundy was an idiot. Ah, uh, he was putting in players at the wrong time. He wasn't using players when he should be using them. He was using players when he shouldn't be using them. And then his dumb comments, post-game comments, it was like, oh well, whatever. And it's like, you know, if I'm the owner of the team, my head coach is saying, oh well, whatever. It's like, oh well, whatever, you're out the door, buddy. You know, your job is to win, not to go, oh, well, whatever. Uh, I couldn't stand Van Gundy. So um, this will be, you know, they're, they're not going to be at the top of the, the, the league, but um, uh, they are going in the right, right direction. Maybe they'll get in the playoffs, and maybe they'll win a series in the playoffs. But that won't, we won't really know until, like I said, the end of January, if they're even heading towards playoff territory or not. So, but anyway, it's it's a good start for both of those teams. Um, now, on the, on the Lions, um, I'm going to keep one eye open on the Lions, and on my main focus, since I grew up in Los Angeles, I'm putting my full blast. Uh, all my energy into the Los Angeles Rams, as it should be. I was born in Detroit, and that's as far as it goes. But I would really like to see the Lions do something, so I'm going to be looking at them with one eye. Um, I will want them to win, but um, it is what it is with the Lions. Um, this is going to be... <coughs> Excuse me again. Ah, I can't get this out of my throat. Um, anyway, um, tomorrow's game with the Bears, that's going to be scary. If the, the, It looks like TJ uh, Lang is out. Um, uh, his, his substitute better be ready. Uh, if And I'm putting a lot of this, you know, as much as I am a big critic of Jim Bob Cooter, but uh, credit... Or blame needs to be put where it is, and Matthew Stafford has to take uh, quite of this. Um, that stupid pitch to him to, to carry on Johnson was just ridiculous. What did he just give up on the game? That's kind of my thoughts on that. Um, but he's the signal caller. He's lining up the offensive line when he's doing this and that. So um, there's a lot of areas where. Matt Stafford is just screwing up big time. And um, what I would suggest, um, I think Jim Bob Cooter, since Matt Stafford likes him so much, demote Jim Bob Cooter, put him back to where he's just working one-on-one -on -one with him. Make him back to the quarterback's coach. Then get in an offense coordinator who knows how to actually call plays and stuff. And have... Cooter help develop Stafford into to, because he's just holding on to the balls he, uh, too long. He's, that's why he's getting killed. Um, so you, you can't blame Jim Bob Cooter when Stafford should be either throwing it away or you know he ha <coughs> he has situations where he could actually run a little bit and at least at least get a positive out of Nick, but he's not doing that. So I don't know what's going on. So, um, but the Lions, the only way the Lions can salvage their season and actually make anything, they would have to win out. Uh, but that would be, that's what championship teams do. They don't have a championship team. But, you know, if, uh, miracles of miracles, if they win the next eight in a row, um, and they end up 11 and 5. Well, that would be a, a statement, but I don't. That, they're just not good enough. Um, too many holes. Um, and uh, personally, I'm I'm fearing for Matt Stafford's um, health in the next because they got Chicago twice. He gets beat up by Mac, and then they play the Rams down the road. If Mac doesn't um, enter the Stafford. I mean, it's going to be more than just a little itty-bitty finger. It's going to be serious. And um, 
And if Mac doesn't injure him to, to knock out his season, oh, Aaron Donald on the Rams will. It's This is, could be very ugly for the Lions these next few games, or it could be very good. It just all depends, but I'm not expecting much from the Lions. Um, they're going to get a couple of wins. Um, uh, two or three wins, maybe. Uh, six and ten, something like that. But uh, they're, they're not going anywhere unless a, a big miracle happens. And um, well, that's about it. So that's why I'm paying more attention to the Red Wings and um, Pistons. Now, their seasons look a lot more... Uh, a lot more exciting and there's there's a lot of hope for both the uh, Pistons and Red Wings but we'll see later as I said earlier uh, last thing before I finish because I've been going on for a while um, the Wolverines now they play Rutgers today at three something um, they are favored by like something like 39 points um, let's just hope this revenge tour goes and um, I think Jim Harbaugh is, you know, and he, he, I want to compare kind of like I did this in another video, but Harbaugh with with the, the Patricia thing. Uh, I was one of those who was jumping on the, on the thing saying, get rid of Harbaugh, get rid of Harbaugh. This is his fourth year and he's finally turning things around. So now, <laughs> now I, I, I've got to bite my lip and say, keep Harbaugh, keep Harbaugh. You just can't go into something and expect overnight success. It doesn't happen on any level. Not in the NCAA. Not in the NFL. Um, and, and all the way down the line even to, 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 to high school stuff. You just can't turn around a program overnight. So um, this is uh, Harbaugh's fourth year I believe. Uh, third or fourth. And look what he's doing. Uh, um, and um, I think this is going to continue. Whether or not um, they they win the Big Ten, whether or not they win a national champion, that's going to be tough. Alabama is a tough team, and they really do have to because in the polls they do have to blow out. This has got to be a blowout score with Rutgers today. It's got to be, and I think Harbaugh has them focused on each individual game, and uh, they're just they're putting their uh, they're putting their, they've got the uh, pedal to the metal. Uh, they're going full blast. So let's hope for a blowout. I mean, we're talking about like 56 to 10 or uh, 65 to 17 or, or something like that where our Rutgers points are, are done on garbage time. Um, preferably, it would be a shutout. Uh, they, they nearly shut out Penn State, so there's no reason why they shouldn't shut out Rutgers in a blowout fashion like 55 to nothing that would be great um, but they need to do that and that will keep them in a number four but they if they if they play lackluster um, god forbid a loss um, or even just a uh, uh, squeak by victory they're going to be dropped down uh, they'll be knocked out of the fourth they'll still be in the top ten but um, uh, but if they win ugly it's going to be ugly because they're going to drop in the pole. So it needs to be a blowout win. It needs to be convincing. And uh, go blue. Um, that's it. Um, let's hope Matt Stafford stays healthy tomorrow. Um, I'm really worried about that game. Um, and again, my focus, my one eye is going to be on the Lions. And my main focus is going to be on the Rams. Uh, Rams are... are doing it and when they're playing bad they're still finding ways to win to play bad that's what I want to see from the Lions even when they're playing bad come out with a W um, because you're not going to play good every week that just happens you're going to have a, a tough battle but the idea is to get the W just not give up like they did last the last two weeks because that's what it looked like anyway that's it I've talked enough and I will talk to you later